Well, the video of a man who died in police custody in Joliet has led to a call for an independent investigation. Tonight, the mayor is talking to CBS2 investigator Dave Savini, who broke the story about the video's existence this week. Dave is live outside the Joliet police station, and Dave, you say the mayor is concerned about how evidence was handled here. That's right. He says we obtained video from a camera angle he never knew about. Plus, audio is missing. Clearly, there was there was some improper behavior on that video. Any way you slice it, there were things that that, that police officers are not supposed to do. Wake up, bitch! Let's go. What did you feel when you saw it? I think it's tragic. It certainly was wasn't necessary. I think everyone would agree with that, and I could definitely empathize with the family of this man. Joliet Mayor Bob Odekirk says our investigation into the death of Eric Lurie exposed new evidence that was never turned over to him or city lawyers that handle possible misconduct cases. He knew this seven minute squad car video from January had recently surfaced, revealing how Lurie's ability to breathe was obstructed for a minute and 38 seconds, but was never told about this camera angle obtained by the CBS2 investigators. It shows 13 people passing through. So you didn't even know about that other video? I was told there is no other video, which is problematic. And then there's another problem. All the audio that should be on the recording just seconds after the slap is missing. You want to know why there is no audio after the slap? Absolutely. That means we can't hear a thing during these final moments. As one airway, his mouth is closed and appears to be filled with plastic from a broken bag of drugs. His other airway, his nose, is being held shut and restricting him of oxygen. So he was suffocating. In my opinion, anybody would suffocate in that situation. The man who blew the whistle on the videos, Joliet Police Sergeant Javier Esqueda says it would take tampering to lose sound. It's almost like the supervisor looks up and says something to somebody and then you hear the sound cut out. That's what alerted me that possibly they were trying to get rid of evidence. So there was a deliberate and intentional act to turn off the audio or get rid of the audio. Had to be. There's no way that could happen. He says when he found out about the video, he had to report it because Eric Lurie's family and widow had a right to know. That was my soulmate, my best friend. And for him to just be gone in the blink of an eye, it tears me up inside. Are you afraid that you might lose your job? There's some fear, and when we see stuff like this, we have to come forth with it. We can't sit there and be quiet because then we're just part of what the problem is. But I have asked for the Attorney General's office to come and investigate. Why do you think it was important to blow the whistle on this? In light of everything that's been happening, you know, George Floyd really hit a lot of us police officers. When we saw that video, a lot of us cried. People don't believe that. And the thing is, there are a lot of good officers out, of, out there out of 750,000. Not everybody is a bad cop. The attorney general has yet to comment in this case. Now, the Will County coroner ruled this death in an accidental overdose months ago, but today in a statement said the officers in this video, they played no role in Eric Lurie's death. Erica. Oh, so that's what he's saying, the accidental overdose. But is the family planning on bringing in their own expert now to conduct a review of the autopsy? I spoke to the family. I spoke to their attorney earlier this week, and they say they're exactly going to do that. Expect a lawsuit in this case. Expect a civil suit. Expect depositions. This could go on for a long time. Yes. All right. Dave Savini, thank you.